I'll hide this screen. So the first thing you do, I do when I open up a picture in the screen is to go check check the lighting on the picture because that's the easiest thing to correct and it's very simple to do. So you go to enhance, adjust lighting and levels. And this gives you a graph. If, if it opens up here in the middle of your picture, you can just move it over to the side. It gives you a graph that shows how the lighting is distributed on your picture. And you can see on this one that the bulk of it is over here on the shadow side because there's a lot of dark in the picture and this is the highlight side and it the line doesn't make it over to the edge of the square the easiest way to adjust that is pull this little arrow thing over to the edge of where the graph starts you can go as far as you want but see how it blows out the picture so it's I always am a bit conservative because you can always change it later and you can use the scroll button on your mouse to change it fine-tune it. So I'm just going to be conservative on that. I have the history window open over on this side of the program and you can use it to go back and forth in your editing of the picture to undo or redo whatever you want or start over from a certain place. So you can see what it looked like when I opened it to now with the levels adjusted. And the next thing I notice is that the white balance is slightly off. The whites in the picture are kind of yellow. So are the skin tones. So you go to enhance, adjust color, remove color cast. And you can click on an area of the picture that's white or gray or black. White is usually, the gray works really well too. But you can experiment around too. But you can click various areas and say like, hmm, that looks a little bit stark. And you can reset and click somewhere else and I think well that kind of has a pink overtone so reset and let's click over here and I like that color you might not you know what color it was you were there and then I'd say okay and then you can look over here and see how you like the change and that looks pretty good now one thing I like to do with these pictures is adjust the midtones. It really perks the picture up, it changes the midtone curve, and it just gives it a little bit more oomph. So what I do to do that is I go to enhance, adjust color, and I go to adjust color curves. I like to move the window over to the side here so that I can see the picture. What I like to do, this is just my way of doing it, I like to pull up the mid you can see the changes it's making here on this graph. Pull up the mid-tone curve a bit, and it'll brighten the mid-tones, and then I, I like to lower the mid-tone contrast. This just gives that picture a little bit more punch. It just gives it a little bit more brightness and clarity. So if you look at the difference before and after, it just gives it a bit more brightness and, and gives that a bit more zing. And those are the basic things to do to edit the picture. I noticed that here on the jeans are two, I'm using my scroll button to scroll in on the picture. There are two white spots on the jeans that could be a reflection from something or it could be some dust on the sensor or something like that. Super easy to get rid of them. Take the heat, go over here to the spot healing brush and choose a brush. You can choose the brush size. You can choose it up here to whatever size you want. Use the smallest size that will cover the spot you want to do. And just click on it <coughs> and it will, it somehow didn't fix it. There. Excuse that cough. You just click on that. I probably need a bigger size brush for that one. And it and you can like spread it around. Oh, see? There. Got rid of those white spots in the jeans. And then uh if you want to crop a picture, 
basically right now it's pretty good. I think you might have used a bit too high of ISO in this picture. There's a bit of graininess in the face and the focus isn't directly on the face. It's more on this column which is why you need to choose your focus area. Another thing that I like to do sometimes if you're taking a portrait in a studio you usually have a light set up to highlight the hair. To do that on an outside portrait or without special lighting you can take the dodge tool and go to dodge. Dodge means to lighten, burn means to darken. The dodge tool, instead of a pick a brush size that covers most of the area you want to cover. And I like to dodge, you can choose highlight shadows or midtones. If you dodge the highlights, it just brings out the highlights in an area and makes it a little more pleasing. You can see it just lightens up the highlights in the hair. Then I like to do it just on the face because in a studio portrait you'd have brighter lighting on the face. You can just see it just brings out the face. That might be a bit much but you just want to bring out the face a bit like that. So you see there is the, that and then it brightened up that, the face a bit. And then like if you wanted to you can see that Meatball's face is really hard to see. You can go back to dodge and you can dodge the midtones. You can choose the amount you want to dodge or burn here. I like to do it very conservatively because you can always do it more. I only have 7%. And then you could dodge the midtones on Meatball's face. So his face shows up a bit more. And you can see his expression more. You could go in and dodge the shadows on his eyes if you wanted to as well. If you wanted Wes's hand knit socks to show up more, you could dodge them a little bit, but that looks kind of weird. So basically, for a quick edit, this is all you need to do. Now, to crop it, this is not a size that you could print. You can choose a crop ratio. You go to crop, and then choose what type of, if you're going to print this out as a 4x7, 4x6 uh, or 5x7, you'll get a crop, you'll get a crop thing here. I want to scroll in to get the picture right onto the thing. And you just draw the square onto the picture. You get you can get the grid on it, which shows you the rule of thirds. And mostly the 5x7 is pretty much, no, I have 8x10. 8x10 here is the right size for this. But if you wanted to do 5x7, then you, you get it more narrow. You might want to scoot it over like this so that on the rule of thirds, you want to put something on this, especially on the third line. If you put it over this way, you'll get Wes's face on almost on the point of the third here. So I think I'd crop there to do a 5 by 7 print. And then you of course need to save it. If you were going to resize it to send to somebody, you go to image, a resize, image size. You always want to do it in pixels so that it's easy to judge. It'll tell you here what the size of inches is. is. But to, re to send it, this is pretty much the size that you could send it. But say I just wanted to make it smaller, 800 wide. And then you say OK, and it shows you. And then you can go up here to view actual pixels, and that's what size it would look on someone's computer if they have the same resolution on their computer as you as yours. And if you're sending this picture, this would be a good time now to select an area to sharpen. And you don't really need to sharpen the whole picture. Mostly you just want to sharpen the face. So you go over here to uh, Selection Brush Tool and just select the face area. And then I like to feather so you don't get uh, a demarcation line of what's sharper and what's not. 
So you go up here to select and feather. And I like to feather at 11 pixels. You can choose whatever you want. It just will make it so that there's an 11 pixel area of feathering so that you don't see any sharp line of demarcation where you sharpened and did. And then I like to modestly sharpen. You go to enhance, adjust sharpness. And I like to do the more refined. I like to do a radius of 0 0.5. And um, we could try 21% here. Let's just see. That might be, that looks pretty good. And then you do select, deselect. Now if you want to send this picture, you would come up to file, save as, and you would want to save it as a JPEG. I'll just do sample. And you say save, and then you get the screen to adjust it, what quality of saving. The smaller you go, the less K it will be, <coughs> excuse me, but the poorer quality it will be. The largest size of this is 734 KB, which is kind of high to send, not too bad. But if you move it back to 11, it's still a really good quality to send, and it's only 536 KB. So then you say, okay, and it will save it to that. And then that's, if you didn't want to do, if you wanted to save this for a print, I could go back here to just where I cropped it, and it will be returned to here. You could sharpen the face on the largest side. Usually it requires a bit more sharpening for a print because your pixels are bigger. It, and so then you would go to, oh, I didn't do feather. I feather that. Then enhance the sharpness. And for a print, I'd, I'd probably go a little bit more, like 32%. And then deselect. And then for a print, you can save it either as the highest JPEG or else you can save it as a TIFF. The TIFF is a non-loss format, and it, it's nice for printing, or if you want to save a picture that you might want to re-edit another time, and then you just save it. And it will tell you the kinds of compression. You want to do no compression. And say, okay. And there is a very quick lesson on video, on editing pictures, and me trying to use this video software, which now I'll see if it works.